In a previous video I have shown you how to create a new Excel database and connect a card template to that database using the step by step wizard. After creating the Excel file we clicked on add card definition, gave the card definition a name and specified a category. The next wizard page came up with the question whether we want to skip the step by step wizard. In this video I will show how to configure a card template without using the step by step wizard. This is important to understand because we will be using the card definition wizard. The card definition wizard is needed in any case if you want to access functionality that is not supported by the step by step wizard. Also if you want to change the configuration of an existing card layout you need to use the card definition wizard. When clicking finish, Card Exchange automatically opens the card definition wizard. The left side of the first wizard page lists a series of questions that can be answered by checking or unchecking a checkbox. The first question is, do you want to define a card layout? It is checked by default and we will leave it like that. The second question is, do you want to enable magnetic encoding? I will leave that box unselected. How magnetic encoding works will be the subject of another video. The third question is, do you want to connect to a database? As we want to connect to the Excel file I created previously, I will check that option. Please note that the option about contactless smart card encoding is only available if you have a card exchange ultimate license. External plugins are only available if you have either the ultimate edition or a special license for plugins. In order to create a card layout and the database definition, we need to specify a file name for both. Let's call them employee card and employee database respectively. You can see that the card layout files have the extension CEDX. Database definitions have the extension DTD. If no path is specified, both files are found in the Card Exchange Data folder under My Documents Card Exchange Data. We will now click on the Create button to create a new card layout. As you see, the Card Exchange Designer opens up with an empty template. Let's start adding clip art. In the Page Layout menu, we find the menu button called Background. We have four types of background. No background, a solid color background, a gradient color background, or a background image. We will select an image from our computer to show as background. Note that the background picker has an option Point to File. If you select this option, you avoid that the entire image is loaded into your template file. It keeps your template file more compact, but also makes it less portable, because you need to make sure that the image is always available on the specified path. Let's now add a logo. You can insert an image object from the Insert menu using the Insert Image button. There is also a shortcut in the Home menu. Please click on the image button and drag a target rectangle on the design area. As soon as you release the mouse button, the insert image window appears. Here you can select an image with the select image button. Again, you can save it as point to file to avoid that the image data is included in the template file. If the size of the object and the size of the image do not match, the image will keep its aspect ratio and be aligned in the top left corner of the object. You can change that behavior with the alignment options. With the fill option, the image will be distorted to fill up the available space. Uniform to fill will also fill up the available space but without changing the aspect ratio, causing parts of the image to be invisible to the card. Uniform is the most common option and is the default choice. To add a variable image like an ID photo we also need to add an image object. 
but now instead of selecting an image we type a variable name in the expression box. This name should not contain any spaces or special characters. When you click on close, Card Exchange recognizes that you added a new variable and asks for a default value. You can leave it empty or select a default image using the image button. Again, you might prefer to keep the image out of out your template file. Let's align the image to the lower right corner of the card object. Adding text objects works very much in the same way. For fixed text objects, we simply type the text. Choosing the font family and font size of our choice. For a variable text object, we type a variable name in the expression box. And define a default value. Let's also align the object properly. We can now close and save the design. To create a database definition, we need to click on the corresponding Create button and follow the same steps as in the previous video. Please note that we now have defined a layout and created a database connection, but we haven't specified how the two are linked to each other. To do that, we click on Next to go to the Mappings window. We see on the left hand side the variables we created in the card layout. For that reason, we call the variables often mapping names. On the right hand side, we can select for each variable what type of data should be mapped to it. We will use the name field to show a combined first name and last name. We will link the job title to a field in the database. The ID photo variable should obviously show the ID photo, so we select photo here. To know where the photo should be stored, we need a database column that specifies the image file name, for example the ID field. We also need to specify the path and the extension. By default, photos are stored in the photo folder inside the card exchange data folder. The image format is normally JPEG. If you are going to use card exchange for cropping photos, you can force the photos to be cropped with a fixed aspect ratio. That way you can make sure that the photos fit in the photo object and that the cards have a consistent layout. And there we go. In the configuration tab, you can always open the card definition wizard to make any changes. 
There are also shortcuts to the designer, the database definition wizard, and the mappings window. Thank you for your attention.